Uh, my sermon, friends, this morning is called Our Shepherd and Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you like to have a seat? Today we're going to continue in our second of three sermons in a sermon series I'm doing on peace. Uh, last week we talked about yielding to peace. Uh, a reminder that peace isn't from here. Peace is a gift from Jesus, right? Remember? Peace is not a situational thing that we achieve like we, when we get all our ducks in a row. Instead, peace is a gift we get from Jesus that we can have any time. Today, I'd like for us to chat about what this gift of peace looks like and how can we receive it. You know, perhaps the most loved and known chapters of the whole Bible is the 23rd Psalm. Psalm 23 kind of goes with a set, doesn't it? 23rd Psalm, how great thou art, the smell of lilies with me, funerals, right? Many of you, when we read Psalm 23 just now, you remembered a friend's funeral, a relative's funeral, because you read it there. And there's a reason why this is so, right? People like Psalm 23 at funerals because of the comfort that it brings. Just imagine being King David as he wrote this psalm. Maybe he was there, young David, sitting beneath this big tree, looking upon his flock. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Or this could have been written on a day of battle when he was being pursued. And he could have been like alone and in a cave and thinking back at that time in his life and said, even though these enemies are around me, the Lord is my shepherd. Or it could have been like old man David. I like, the, like, I like the sound of that. Later in his life, and he was looking back on uh, the time he was a shepherd and kind of was giving us Psalm 23 as his testimony. I wonder, looking back at like the green, the, uh, the green pastures and still waters, whenever it was written, you can tell this, that this was written by someone who had gone through something. Yes? David knew the Lord's peace. He knew him as shepherd and as Lord. I wonder if you know him like that. You can. As shepherd and Lord. The peace that David knew is something you can know. Peace you can experience even when everything around you seems to be falling apart. So I'd like for us to take a careful look at Psalm 23 this morning. If you'd get it out in your handy-dandy bulletin, that'd be great. Page 6 is where we are. The first thing I want you to do is just look at it with me, kind of scan it with me. Notice that it's kind of divided into two sections, isn't it? Verses 1 through 4, and then verses 5 and 6. Verses 1 through 4 look, the images of a shepherd... And verse 5 and 6, that image is left behind to speak of more like a faithful and victorious Lord. Shepherd and Lord. Sounds good to me. Doesn't it you? That's the kind of peace I need. A peace that provides, guides, and remains with me like a shepherd. And a peace that gives me confidence and a future like the Lord. Think of this with me. We need presence, the shepherd, and power, the Lord. A shepherd without a Lord is presence with no power. Say it with me. Presence. Is this microphone on? Check. One, two. Say it with me. Presence. Power. Think of this, a shepherd with no Lord is presence with no, that's nice, but it'll only keep you company and misery and defeat. The peace you would see is shallow because you know you're going down because all you have is presence and no power. A Lord with no shepherd is power with no presence. It may bring us success, but there's no comfort in it. Peace, if it comes at all, is hollow and distance because you are never loved or understood. Power and no presence seeks only to fix, not to love. Maybe you have presence people in your life who love you but have no power to fix anything. 
Maybe you have power people in your life who just want to help you with their power, but don't love. We have good news today because Psalm 23 speaks of a Lord who is, who is both shepherd and Lord, presence and look at it with me. First, the shepherd. A shepherd who brings a presence and a peace that you can know. He provides, he guides, and he remains. Let's read verse 1 together. Ready? Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Notice it's, it's not the Lord who will be my shepherd. It's not the Lord who has been my shepherd. When is the Lord your shepherd? Right now. The Lord is my shepherd. He is a Lord who is, is, is with us, looking after us, caring for us. Like the good shepherd, Jesus describes himself as being in our gospel reading we just heard. And so because he is our shepherd, then we shall not be in want. Listen, this is not an insurance policy against trouble and lack. Rats. But as a good shepherd, he does provide, right? One of the most important provisions Jesus gives us is peace. A peace that he gives, he provides for us. A peace that we can know no matter what. He provides a way for us to get through even the most difficult times in our lives. He is with us. Next, uh, so he provides. Next, he guides. We can know his peace through the way that he guides us. Let's read verse 2 together. Ready? One, two, three. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. I love this. Think of this. So our shepherd can see what we cannot see and has knowledge that we do not have. Aren't you glad? Jesus, hear me, has the green pasture and still water for you perfectly in his view this morning. You believe this? And will you listen then for his voice and let him guide you to it. How do we hear? How does God guide us? Through his word, through your prayers, through the godly counsel of friends, those God incidences that he gives, right? Opened doors, closed doors. Hear me. God guided you here today, either in person or online. He guided you here today to hear this sermon just for me to tell you that God is guiding you right now. How do I know this? Because he's got the green pastures and still waters in view. And this guidance isn't just external, it's internal. Let's read verse 3. Ready? One, two, three. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his namesake. Woo! The peace of the Lord, doesn't it? Has a way of reaching into your soul and reviving it. Encouraging the discouraged heart. I've known it. When in our fear and our anger and our discouragement, we might veer off to a different path, what does he do? He guides us on the right pathway, not just for our sake, but do you see what it says in the passage? But for his name's sake, so that his glory might be revealed in and through us, through what we're going through. Wow. God wants you to persevere. God wants to give you his peace, not only because he loves you, but also so that he can show the people around you his glory. He puts us on right pathways to give us a testimony that will then encourage someone else and put them on their right pathway and give them a testimony. You remember that old Fabergé shampoo commercial? God's peace in you will encourage two friends and that will encourage two of their friends and then, and so on, and so on. And so, am I the only one who saw this commercial? <laughs> Lisa, you saw this commercial. You know what I'm talking about. And so on, and so on. That's what right pathway for his namesake does. Next. 
the Lord provides and guides. And third, he remains. This is good news. Verse 4, let's read this long verse together. Ready? One, two, three. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The shepherd remains. Remember shepherded presence. Here's an important point. Listen to me carefully. This is the major point Psalm 23 wants us to teach us. Hear me, hear me, hear me. The walk with the shepherd is not escape from trouble. Darn it. Verse 4 tells us that right pathways are very likely to lead you to the valley of the shadow of death. But we have a shepherd of presence who will remain with us. Look at the language here carefully with me. Look at it. Where is the shepherd when we are afraid? Ahead of us? Behind us? No, he's with us. See that? He, and he has his rod and his staff. Defense and control. No wolf can snatch us. Did you hear what Jesus said in the gospel? He will not let us stray. Defense and control. He's going to protect us all the way, even in the valley of the shadow of death. And I love that language too, because you know what? The shadow of the death of the shadow of death is all we're actually going to get to feel, by the way. Did you know this? Death is conquered. We'll only know its shadow on the way to eternal life. But when we walk that valley, think of this, every other faithful family member and friend is going to have to turn to leave you when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Death's valley is one where the traveler walks alone, except for the good shepherd who promises what? To walk right beside us. That's the shepherd who gives a peace we can know provides, guides, and remains. The shepherd is presence. Now, let's, let's consider the Lord who gives us a peace that is lasting. He gives us a confidence and a future, the Lord of power. So the first thing he gives us is confidence. Say confidence. Oh, that was really an unconfident way of saying confident. <laughs> Y'all like, am I in a Baptist church this morning? Where am I? This man is making me speak out loud during the sermon. Is that right? Do I need to call the bishop? We're going to call the bishop when we get home. Knock yourself out. Say it with me. Confidence. Confidence. Verse 5. Say it with me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Listen, it's one thing to survive a threat. But the Lord comes, the Lord of power comes and turns threats into victory. Even, look at this verse, even as the enemies are gathered outside in your lives, real or imagined, personal or intangible, those enemies, they're gathering around us. What's the Lord doing? He's calmly preparing a table for us to sit down and eat at. He anoints our head with oil like a, like a good friend would have done back then when you showed up for a dinner party. Even as our enemies are outside our doors crying out their threats, he fills our cup to running over. Hear me. Every fight that you are in this morning is a fixed fight. Confidence. We can know a peace no matter what we face, knowing that we will not be lost and that he has us in the palm of his hand. And no matter how it ends up, it ends up in victory. Am I making sense up here? Say yes. yes. I have to close. Here's the final thing. The Lord who gives us a confidence and a future. The final verse. Say it with me. Verse 6. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Have I ever told you guys that I have a dog at home? <laughs> have I mentioned this a million times? Really? Have I mentioned this? Uh, I have this dog named Winston. He's about this big, and he's uh, brown and white. And uh, Winston follows me and or Lori from room to room wherever we go. 
if we're on the couch together, and I get up and I go to get some water out of the fridge, what does Winston do? Pat, 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 follows me right in there. He wants to be where I am. Mostly because wherever I am, there is a prospect of snacks. <laughs> but look at this verse with me again. Do you see? Goodness and mercy are like Winston. They follow you. The Hebrew word is actually pursue you. All the days of your life. So wherever you go, goodness and mercy are just like following you around. What's in your future? Goodness and mercy. We've already been given the image of the banquet earlier in the psalm. And that points to the Lord's Supper, doesn't it? And the marriage feast of the Lamb that, lamb that we'll attend in heaven together. So, but then, even after our days are ended, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Listen, a servant, which some of you think you are in your relationship to God, leaves the house and goes home. But a son or a daughter, a child of the house, which is what you actually are, what do you get to do? You get to dwell. A servant goes home. A servant, I mean, a servant goes home, but a child stays. There is no ending to the Lord's promises to you. Nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. What does your future hold? Dwelling in God's house forever. Psalm 23. Peace be with you. Thanks. A shepherd who gives us a peace we can know. Presence. Who provides, guides, and remains. A Lord that has power and gives us a peace that is lasting, who gives us confidence in a future. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.